Come join me here. Out, isn't it? Yep. Do I sit forward at you? You sit forward. Yeah, we've got to in. do Gandalf and Frodo, haven't we? <laughs> we Is that right now? Yeah. <laughs> Gandalf and Frodo. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like we're massively different heights, but Does we. Make a difference? <laughs> well, maybe I know what we need to do. This is this help. This will help. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sit on that. Booster seat. <laughs> I'll sit on the booster seat. <laughs> Like a giant. <laughs> Are we ready to go? Yes. You don't look like a giant. <laughs> you look lovely. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> Hello, YouTube friends. Hi. We're back here, Anna and I, with another in the series of uh, Let's Make a Quilt with Anna. Now, it's been a while since the last one, and we have not been idle. No. Indecisive. Yes. Let's talk a little bit about that. Because yeah. uh, I think we talked, didn't we, about what block you might want and we're going to look at the block today but let's talk a little bit about the fabric choices and the difficulty you're having with them oh <laughs> it's been so hard yeah I, first i was like I, i'd seen a fabric in this shop called the cloth house mm. cloth house cloth shop always get those the two. cloth house yeah in london beautiful shop yeah lovely. not a quilting shop no <laughs> I, kept over. I was like i really love this fabric so came with very patient and was like we'll get some samples and i got the samples and was like yeah, I don't like them. Well, we liked them. Yes, but not together. But not all of them and not together. Yeah. Keep going, because then what happened? Then I was, Kate instructed me, look for pre-cuts. So look at all the different um, companies that are selling um, fat quarters and things like that. So. And the reason for that is, I think I've mentioned this before, that if mm. you get a line from one designer and in one bundle... In theory and in practice, they all really do go together and mm. that um, the thinking has been done for you. And so I thought that might help you. <laughs> and oh, I mean, I've looked at a lot, haven't I? Yes, we have. Lots of different. And it, it's a kind of frustrating thing because none of them are quite what I have in my head. But yet I can't get the, what I have in my head from different sources. You know and I, mean? I think that this illustrates perfectly um, starting out in quilting and how what mm. a minefield it can be. Yeah. Because if there was if there was such limited choice, you could only choose from six things. It would be easy. Yeah. But you can choose from six thousand things. Yeah. And that's become the problem. Mm. And so I think uh, we've had a lot of conversations, Anna and I, about yeah. fabrics. And so uh, and. Lots of false starts with, oh, I like this, oh, no, but I don't like that. Mm. So I decided to come at it from the other way. I've decided to come at it from the point of constructing the block that you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and so today, what we've got on the table here now, this box here is a, a load of stuff that I brought back when I was clearing my mum's sewing room after she died. And I've got all these... Um, lilac-y prints here none of which I'm particularly uh, enamoured with what about you not a fan no we're not a fan of them at all mm. however they're very very good for practice fabrics for practicing blocks putting colors together and mm. so what my suggestion to Anna was that we would make the block that uh, is the one you've chosen from that Pinterest board uh, so that we so that we make a start yeah because I can't visualize it as a whole quilt Abstract, at all, because no. that, that image that, that I Pinterested is just like a tiny little section of it. But right. So uh, my thinking is that what we're going to do today then is construct a block out of scrap fabrics and then once you can see how it looks, mm. then we'll start. So the second thing that we possibly won't do this today because I think constructing the block is going to take quite a while. Yeah. But then I was, I've invited Anna to, to, to go through all my fabric stash so nice. and pull out <laughs> all the colours and patterns that she's drawn to mm. so that she makes a colour palette, which is the opposite of buying a line from a designer. But this is uh, only my stash, but it is quite considerable, yes. has to be said. <laughs> so you'll be able to ratch through all of that yeah. Pull out all the bits you want and maybe that will be next time. Yeah. But what I propose we do today is make this block. Mm -hmm. um, now, I knew the block that you wanted to make 
and I've been scratching my head about how to make it. I'm fairly certain in the comments there's going to be someone who says, what are you doing it like that for? There's a much easier way. Well, that would be great though. We can yes, see that for next time. Yes, it would be great. We can, we can <laughs> always happy to learn from other people. <laughs> yeah. But I had a, an appointment at a clinic the other day for my ongoing vertigo problems. And I was uh, sitting waiting like you do. I turned up in plenty of time, mm -hmm. but they were obviously running late. I had about three quarters of an hour, which I put to very good use. I got my notepad and a pen and I scribbled away at all sorts of ways that this block might come together. And I nailed it. And so what we're going to do now is make that block. Brilliant. Um, I have my little genome sewing machine here because I use my Juki um, all the time when I'm sewing, but I don't want that to be an extra level of complexity to teach you how to use yeah, that. I'm a little bit scared of that. I don't be scared of it, <laughs> but you won't be scared of... No, of, I've used that one before. Yes, really. this little guy here. Yeah. So we're going to sew on this then, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about things like the quarter inch seam and pressing and cutting, mm -hmm. and then we're going to construct the block. So it's going to be quite a hands-on day today. Mm -hmm. You up Great. for that? Yeah, yeah. Good. Excellent. All right then, no further ado, let's get started. Okay. Okay. So we're going to say, <laughs> I think we're going to, we're in for a really fun morning. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to set ourselves up then and uh, we're making up this block from scratch. Mm. That's a very useful material, scratch. Yeah. People make ev all sorts of things from scratch, don't they? Mm. I, I made this house from scratch. <laughs> I, ma I, I made this uh, cake from scratch. <laughs> Where do you buy scratch? <laughs> Anyway, that's as maybe. Let's uh, change all the camera angles a little bit so that we can see uh, what it is we're going to do next. All right. Okay. So now that we've reset up a little bit, the first thing I'm going to get you to do, Anna, mm. is just cut some strips of fabric. Okay. Now, it's not your first time cutting fabric, is it? No, but it's been a couple of years, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. So we're going to talk a little bit about the kit we've got, which we mentioned last time. Mm -hmm. The minimum you can get away with if you're going to make quilts. Of course, you can cut with scissors, but the accuracy is far, far better if yeah. we're going to cut. Uh, and, and our result is uh, all pretty much based on accuracy. So we've got a cutting mat, a cutting ruler, and a rotary cutter mm -hmm. and you can get all these in all different shapes and sizes and we talked about inches didn't we and this one is in increments of inches now some rulers I'll mention this briefly um, this is a six and a half inch ruler and so there's an extra half can you see can you see there's an extra half an inch there now if you pick this up and you get it the wrong way round and you just take it to the two inch mark, you've actually got two and a half inches. Mm -hmm. So when I'm using this, I wish it didn't have that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always use it from the, the whole inch side, okay. not the half inch side. Right. Because what we're going to do now, just for this practice block, is cut some two inch strips out of this fabric, this scrap fabric. Mm -hmm. Now, I've already straightened up the edge for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we know that that's a nice straight edge. Uh, I'll get you doing that as you're making yours in the fullness of time. We'll do some of that practicing. Mm. But what you need to, to learn about now is, and I'm not going to labour this point, is very simply is just to cut two inches. Now you can see there's your two inch mark there. Mm -hmm. So if you line two inches up so that you can see that you've got two inches all the way along, all the way along, all the way along, not not a, a scant two inches, an actual two inches. So it's got to be on the fabric. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now another thing that can happen here is that as you start cutting on quite a long piece, moves. It can. Yeah. And so so there's several ways around that one. One mm. really great one that I've seen is a ruler that's got a handle on it. Ah, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, isn't it? I haven't got <clears> a ruler <throat> like that. Mm. And I know there's some channel I watch, I can't remember who it is, who puts a dumbbell on the end. I think it might be <laughs> Karen at Just Get It Done Quilts. It might be her. Yeah. She puts a dumbbell on the end. <laughs> because we are cutting through four layers of fabric. You can cut through four layers, five, six layers, yeah. if you've got a nice sharp blade. So put your hand there and put all your weight through your L through from your shoulder down onto the onto the table that's it uh, it's not a big workout and then press really really hard with this that's it you can hear you can hear when it's cutting right can't you and then I pull that aside and what you've got there is some perfect two and two inch strips 
Okay. Now you can cut, of course you can cut any width you like, but for this block I think these two inches are going to be fine. Okay. So I'm going to get you to do that one more time, mm -hmm. maybe twice, so that then we've got a range to go at when we're doing this. Um, yeah, that's it. You cut a couple more of those, you're doing fine. That's it. That's perfect. So we've relocated to the sewing machine here. And the block that you want to make, and that I've hopefully come up with a plan for how to do it, mm. is um, it's a string pieced block. And it's exactly like the block that I made for the blue and yellow quilt. Do you remember mm -hmm. that one? Yeah. Uh, uh, and so the way that I'm going to do this is to use a piece of foundation fabric. So this is just a piece of thin cotton. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, just a little bit of thin white cotton. Some people do this onto paper mm. or muslin, but I had this and I've got loads of it, so we're going to use this. Okay. And I've cut it 10 inches square, uh, which will mean that if we if it stays this size, our finished block will be nine and a half inches. Okay. But we can, uh, this is a sample block. We can choose whatever size we want for this block. And the way that we're going to make it then, and I know that if you remember, that your block is half string pieced and half plain. Yeah. And the way that I'm doing this, it might not look like that's what I'm doing. Okay. But all will be revealed. <laughs> now, the strips that you've just cut here, Anna, mm -hmm. are these two inch strips of all these little purples. But one of the strips I've cut is two and a half inches. Mm -hmm. Now, as I'm talking to you, it's occurring to me that you can make the strips different widths so that there's a, like a funkiness going on to them. Mm -hmm. You can make them exactly the same width, which means there's a regularity. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing that after we've made a couple of sample blocks, you'll be able to decide. Okay. But because of how we're going to construct this, I need this one, the mm -hmm. two and a half inch one, to be in the middle. Okay. And um, I'm going to sew the first one and show you what I mean. So onto this base piece of fabric, we put your wider strip down first and then just choose anything from your two inch blocks here, from your two inch strips here, anything mm -hmm. at all. And I've got uh, some sharp scissors somewhere. There they are. And we're just going to cut that about the right size. So this first one then, I'm going to put it side to side and then I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch along that side there mm -hmm. through all three layers. The base layer, this layer, and this layer. Okay. So I'm just I'm going to quickly do this, and then in a second you're going to you're going to get on and do this. Now, of course, there's so many things about a sewing machine to know, threading it and maintaining it and all of that. But mm. we're just going to go for the sewing now, mm -hmm. so that it's um, fun. Okay. The quarter inch seam here. Use the side of your presser foot. Mm -hmm. Can you see the presser foot is there? Mm -hmm. Use the side of the presser foot. The wonderful thing about this block is it doesn't actually matter terribly much about accuracy. Okay, that's it's, good. <laughs> yeah. So it's actually quite a good one to start with. Yeah. I'm using universal grey up here. It's my mm -hmm. favourite thing to use. And just try to make sure that they, they're lined up here. Now, when you're making your blocks and your proper blocks, you'll be chain piecing them together. Mm -hmm. But because we're going to be working on one block here, I'm going to use this little tiny piece of fabric as a thread bunny. Okay. You can also do leaders and enders, but let's talk about that next time. Okay. Little, little. Okay. So we snip that off there, snip that leader and ender off there. And we've got our first strip here. Mm -hmm. And when we open that up, we're going to choose another strip for here. And so to limit the number of trips to the iron, I know it's only behind you, <laughs> but we're going to do them two at a time because you're okay. going to fill this whole thing. Do you want to do the next one? Mm -hmm. Great. If you show me what... Uh, well, that was ex just that, just that. So choose a strip colour, anything at all. And you need to put it face, um, right sides together. Mm -hmm. Where am I putting this? You're going to mirror this, so you're going to put it here. Oh, okay. So you're putting right sides together, 
like that so that when it opens out it's going to look like that. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure it's sticking out at the end enough. Now if you wanted to pin this you could but because it's actually quite a short run you don't really need to do that. So pop that off there. You mm -hmm. sit here and don't worry because you can't get anything wrong. <laughs> okay. No you really really can't. That's reassuring. No it is because oh, you're on the booster seat. Do you want to take it off? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Booster. I'll have the booster seat. It's such a ridiculous. Uh, right. Okay. So the presser foot. Then, if you lift the presser foot up mm -hmm. and pop it down, just a moment. Get rid of that. Pop it down anywhere. Now, that's it. The reason why you can't get anything wrong is we have this marvelous thing, the stitch ripper, <laughs> which we are not going to use, but we've mm. got it if we need it. Okay. Okay. So go for it. I'm not watching over your shoulder. Just um, uh, and and. Because this Are you is holding them together here like that? Well, I'm just checking that they're lined up and then yeah. Yeah. You can't get this wrong. You really can't. <laughs> okay. She can't. It's really nice to be sewing, isn't it? Yeah. Then just run the machine onto your thread bunny. Just let it go on. Okay. Now, how was that? Uh <laughs> I haven't so for ages to do it on camera as like oh. <laughs> with your mother-in-law looking over your Possibly, shoulder. Yeah. No, you can't get it wrong on her. Yes, you can. No, you really can't. So am I snipping this off here? Yes, you are. Snip that off there and pop that back down here. And so that what we can see now then is that we've got these two mm -hmm. colours either side. Um, well done. <laughs> so what we now need to do though is take them over to the iron mm -hmm. and press them. Now, when you get going with this, We'll have the ironing pad next to you and the iron so that you yeah. don't even need to get up. Ah, you can press and go, press and go. Yeah. So yeah. what I need you to do now then is uh -huh. press these open. Yeah. And the way that I find, you're not ironing like you're ironing your blouse to go out for the night. You're going to be... Which I do all the time. Of course you do. <laughs> you're going to be using the edge of the iron to press that seam open. Yeah. Okay, so you do the other one now. I mean, I've got steam in it. I shouldn't have steam in it because it distorts the fabric. I've just turned the yeah. steam off. Yeah, it can distort the fabric. The quilt police would have your guts for garters for using steam. Would they? They would. They sound like okay, a scary that's bunch. all you need. It's just that. They are a scary bunch. That's all you'll do. This is scrap fabric. When you're using your really precious 12 pound a meter stuff, <laughs> uh, you will be, we'll be more, <laughs> more careful with it. Okay. okay, so just again, exactly the same. Um, another bit of uh, quarter inch, just using the side of your presser foot. You're doing great, Anna. Thank you. Very reassuring. No, you are. And, and I think when you see how this block comes together, mm. you're going to go, have an aha moment and go, ah. Yeah, because at the minute I'm like, what am I doing? This wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But then all that time sitting wait in the waiting in the clinic will be very, very well worthwhile. <laughs> yeah. Do you get it so it's like precisely no, on that line? No, I start, I, put, I anchor it with a few stitches at the top, like that, mm -hmm. all, all the way onto your second fabric and then you can play around with it as much as you like. Yeah. Okay. And you, it, as long as the first three inches is ready to go, mm -hmm. you're good because you can keep repositioning it. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now you must relax your shoulders <laughs> and your forehead. <laughs> this is fun, remember? Yeah. So your little thread catches on the end here. And as I said to you, I'll labour this point, you'll be chain piecing these when we teach you the proper block. You could be doing that now, I'm making two, but we're just going to do this just now. Okay. Okay. And this will trim all those little scrappy edges off mm -hmm. down to the base block again. it brilliant i think i pull like a, a very angry face when i uh, use the rotary <laughs> like <laughs> really like, yeah i have to watch that uh, okay think of joyful things anna yeah <laughs> think of how cool this quilt's going to look when you've got the colors that you really want yeah it's really good <laughs> i think it's just like a concentration thing when i play the violin i look really angry 
Do you? Yeah, when well, I'm like performing. Because you're concentrating. Yeah. And people would come up to, to me after Are concerts. Right, when they come up and they go, ooh, you look very angry to play the violin. I was like, well, like, oh. okay. Well, it's, it, it is about concentration, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so that's... Okay, brilliant. Now. Hey, that. look at that. I know, even though it's not in... Co ah. My little mistake. So there's a rookie error, <laughs> getting the strip to... Make properly sure cover. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But this is the sample block, so that's yeah. okay. Now, and now we cut do we cut it in half? No. No, you don't. So now you get this block uh -huh. and pop it on top. Okay. No. Um like that. Oh sorry. Okay, now that should be ten inches as well. Because I measured it really carefully. Now I need you to draw a line from corner to corner. From that corner to that corner, mm -hmm. and I've got that pen there. That's a sort of fabric pen, but any old pen will do. Okay. So just draw a line, corner to corner. I'm pressing this really hard again. Don't, <laughs> don't worry too much about that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, don't apologise. Never apologise. We're playing with scrap fabric here, Anna. <laughs> so make sure that you can see that line clearly. Great. Now. What do you think we're going to do now? I want you to sew a quarter of an inch either side of that line. So use your presser foot to write along the side of that line and sew a line of stitching there uh -huh. and a line of stitching there. Okay. Ah, you can think that. <laughs> so instead of using a thread bunny at this point, mm -hmm. you can just lift your presser foot up and whiz the piece round. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Press the foot good. back down again. <laughs> Was that a little aha moment? That's then? a little aha moment. <laughs> There'll be a lot of those. <laughs> That's okay. I'm excited for you to see this block. And now, if you flip that thread bunny round, you can just run it across the thread bunny and cut it off. Very good. <laughs> so can you guess what you do now? Um, cut it down the middle. That's so clever. <laughs> and now with the iron. <gasps> But how come that one's totally disappeared? Maybe I've just done it badly. Oh, it's kind of interesting, isn't it? <laughs> okay, that's something that we'll work on. We may need this middle strip to be... We may need this middle strip to be wider. I made these strips two inches and I made this one at two and a half. We may need this one to be three. Yeah. I'll work that out. That obviously didn't make it onto the back of the envelope. So when you press those two open now... Mm -hmm. I will put some thought into how to Cause make... Because why is it wider as well? I think that's something that I've just done badly. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. It's... First time, yeah. we'll accurately line these up in future. Mm -hmm. it, it, it possibly means that this middle strip wasn't very uh, um, central. Uh, okay. Now, it depends on how much accuracy you want. Now, that's not acceptable, obviously. Mm -hmm. Practice block. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so I think then that I'll make this piece wider uh -huh. and we'll accurately position it. But yep. in doing that, let's pop them up on the design board mm -hmm. and see what they... And just imagine that they're perfect, Anna. Yeah. And they just cling on like that. Okay, and then the next one, and if I remember rightly, the layout of your little women quilt was of them all going in the same direction. Yeah. Now, for a practice block, for our first go, <laughs> thoughts? <laughs> Needs a little bit more practice. <laughs> but I, I think that's, um, I think you should be more generous with your assessment of that one. Yeah. So we'll get back to you in a, a little while mm -hmm. when Anna's made, um, uh, maybe you get two from each 
block. Uh -huh. So maybe we make a few more and see what a, a lot of them look like. Yeah, good plan. All right? Okay. See you in a few minutes. See you in a bit. So I'll leave the dimensions in the description below for the size of the strips and the block and so on if anybody wants to make one just like this but really what I'd say is just have a play and work it out for yourself. Um, if Anna likes this block and she's going to carry on playing with layouts here then next time you see this quilt series we'll be going through my quilt stash which is um, rather large uh, and you'll be able to choose the fabrics that you'd like the look of uh, and we'll make this quilt block again and by then you can decide whether you want to make it a little bit bigger or smaller uh, and we'll play with some blocks in colours that you do like because I think what we're both deciding is that yes we quite like the block but we really don't like the colours <laughs> so um, it's interesting though isn't it because we did those ones in the... Can, can you see them in the frame? I think you're still in front of them. We did some with one colour that was darker, the, the solid was darker, and they really don't... They jump out far too much, don't they? Wouldn't they, they do, but if you had a huge quilt with lots of these in, you might lose them in there. Yeah. But it might illustrate to you that you don't want to use... Yeah. You maybe want to use one all colour. the same colour in yeah. this block. Lots and lots of choices that this has thrown up. Yeah. for us here. So, uh, Anna's playing around with the layout of these um, fabric um, squares. I like this one. Okay, that lovely chevron. Uh, yeah, yeah, I like that cool, one as well. I don't think I want to do that though. Okay. I still but, think the OG one's my fave. <laughs> OG? Yeah. OG? Original. Oh, the, <laughs> the OG, <laughs> the original. Next time you see this little series then, Anna and I will be playing with fabric that she does like. Uh, out of the things that she's ch chosen out of my stash but as well you'll carry on with the search for uh, the holy grail won't you i will which yes. is the fabric of your dreams <laughs> but it's a good idea to oh look at that one now how, how different that one looks it's got like a it's got a touch as a flying goose about it doesn't it in the directional yes well oh, that's interesting that you say that because all quilt blocks have got that kind of geometry mm. and that's what you're experimenting yeah. with here you should um, show them that, you, that thing you Okay, so with. Anna um, had decided that she didn't like this very dark purple. It's so it just jumped out, didn't it? It did. It, it just did. Mm. And so the pale ones there um, give this um, design a little bit more sense, does it, doesn't yeah. it? And if you take something like this very dark blue uh, purple that I used. So what I did with that was I just cut it in half in the same way and did another couple of half square triangles with it mm. and now you've got these plin those up separately yeah and now you can play with another variation so that's another thing you could do yeah i think oh yeah that's cool isn't it <laughs> oh so many possibilities now that's cool that's really cool <laughs> Oh dear, how um, am I going to decide? And that was just because I sewed, um, I took two of these to get, uh, together here and I sewed them in exactly the same way. I put them head to tail like so and then sewed down here either side of the line and then cut them up and you ended up with that. I do like that. Oh dear, another <laughs> variation. But we didn't, that's the good thing, right? We can yeah. make the box and then we make that decision much exactly. later. Exactly. I exactly. love that. Good. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Yeah. So, and if you're enjoying it, then give us a thumbs up 
and um, maybe share this video with someone you know who'd like to start out with quilting in a fairly chaotic way. There are <laughs> loads of uh, channels on the internet where you can learn in a more formulaic way, but I'm enjoying this organic way that you and I are doing yeah, this. Me too. I'm glad you are, because it means that you'll end up enjoying what you're doing mm -hmm. and making a quilt that you'll really, really want to make yeah. and spend time making that. Yeah. Okay, so there you go. Thumbs up, <laughs> subscribe, share, like, <laughs> comment, all of those things. Find us on Instagram. <laughs> yes, find us on Instagram. Talk yeah. about that. Well, we are on Instagram. Uh huh. And Anna will put a link in the description yeah. below. Kate um, at the last homely house that we. Kate have. at the last homely house, yeah. but we also have the hashtag, which we'll leave in the description below, where you can share your experiments with mm. crafting as well, which we always really enjoy seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I think Anna's going to carry on playing. With I am. Yeah. This this is uh, blowing my mind a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this one here. Yeah. It just looks so different, doesn't it? And that's the wonder of quilting. <laughs> It's marvellous. It I'm so pleased you've been bitten by the bug. <laughs> pop those two back up again and uh, I'll move these along. Like that. And then you can... Actually, what happens? Put that one like that. So many possibilities. <laughs>